When I say creativity, what comes to your mind? Maybe someone with a paintbrush on a blank canvas, or maybe someone with some pencils filling in a blank piece of paper, or maybe someone with some headphones producing some music, maybe. Depending on who you are, you have a different image of creativity in your mind. But let me tell you something. Creativity is not only in a certain amount of fields in this world. Creativity is something you can do regardless of your profession. And in this video, I want to help you tap into your inner artist. So let's get into it. Before I start, do you do your boy a little, little, little son, son, a little favor, you know, like the video, appreciate, well, would appreciate it, you know, it helps with the, the YouTube algorithm, you know, leave a, leave a comment down in the, the comment section below, you know, and yeah, let's, let's do it. In this week's video, we are talking about The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. So this book is about a 12 week interactive uh, course type book. So I, I took out, I took out, you know, the, the, the pieces of information that were most useful to me so yeah let's get into it so writing consistently and exploring new ideas helps you connect with that inner creative of yours so you can start off by by writing early in the morning writing a few pages early in the morning why is this because the thing is this allows your your creativity to to flow first thing in the morning and think of it as meditation. You shut off everything that's around you so that you focus on that one thing at that, that, that moment in time. And when you do this, also look to suppress your logical side because your logical side just gets in the way and allow your, your, your right brain or creative brain to, to take the wheel. And you also need to take your creative side out on a date from time to time, you get me? So, you know, set a few hours in the week to, to, create, to connect with that, that inner artist of yours. And that, this could be, you know, going to the beach, uh, going out and watching a movie, or just you know, going out for a walk. The key is, though, is to relax by yourself and just, just, just allow your mind to wander. And the more you explore yourself and the world around you, the more you connect with that inner artist inside of you. Conquering your demons and that self-doubt is a precursor to confidence. So you see, creatives, creatives usually have to overcome a lot of tough situations, right? Uh, let, me, let me know in the comment section down below if, if, if you know what I'm talking about. Right? For example, a lot, of, a lot of parents discourage their kids from, from creative pursuits just because of fear that their children won't, won't eventually be able to take care of themselves financially. And these people usually become shadow artists and for the most part they go on to live very unfulfilled lives and even if they, they're successful in the, the financial sense, then they're, they're always haunted by that creative life that they never had. And to truly unleash your creative side, truly think about what holds you back as a human being. And for the most part, it's usually our, our own thoughts, our negative uh, thought, process that, uh, thought processes that usually hold our creative sides uh, hostage. At the end of the day, the only person in charge of your creativity is who? Guess, guess who? You are the only one, okay? Keep that in mind. Which leads me to my next point, which is all about recovery. And you see, the thing about recovery is recovery is emotionally challenging, but it is the only way to reconnect with your inner creativity. And always keep in mind, always keep in mind, the only way out is through. Take, take anger, for example, right? Anger is, is an emotion that's, that can be very uncomfortable, but it can lead you in the right direction. And imagine, imagine you're, you're watching a movie and by the time you're done with this movie, you're, you're vexed. Your head is about to pop off because you believe you could have done a better job directing the film than the director that made that film. And you're on the right path if you're uncovering weaknesses like you know, negativity, anger, and, and blockages, you know? So 
you know take this take this as a as a good sign and make sure you you stay patient with it because dealing with all these emotions and blockages whatever that it is remember is the only way to connect with that that creative side of yours i see the thing about ideas right ideas are aren't born out of thin air they're born in the the universe or the ether or god whatever you want to call it and you just help them grow and take for example michelangelo right when michelangelo excuse me <laughs> so when michelangelo produced david he never said that he created him he only said that he found him and you know like like many great artists, they, they never say that they, they create something. They usually say that they're, they're, they're a vessel in which, you know, this creative energy uh, expresses themselves. And just, just, like a, just like a tree, an idea smarts off as a small seed. And you're just, you're just responsible for, for overseeing that growth. And if you keep pushing to take care of these ideas, you know, take care of them properly, you know, then you often find out that there's a, there's a higher power looking out there for you. And these, these, uh, these usually manifest in the, the form of opportunities. Once you accept this idea, you will be surprised. You will be astonished at how you no longer suffer from creative blocks. Creative blocks, my friends. You see, creative blocks usually stem from perfectionism, uh, workaholism, and competitiveness, right? And you see fear, fear, fear is the creator's worst enemy. And even now, now that I'm saying it, fear is a human being's worst enemy. And fear, fear can stop you from pursuing your dreams, will, will create insane blockages and make you doubt yourself even when things are going well. And this fear of failure, this fear of failure is usually not your fault. It usually comes from childhood experiences, most likely from a teacher, a parent, or an adult You're saying something like you're, you're a failure or you're never, you know, deemed to, 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 to do anything with your life. You know what, what, what these adults don't realize is their, their external words eventually becomes a, a child or a person's, you know, internal uh, language. Fear can also manifest itself in the form of you asking too much of yourself, like setting unrealistic goals. And when you don't reach said unrealistic goals, you start to blame yourself. Then things like regret, self-hatred, and grief all come into play and eventually start to block your creativity. And then you start putting yourself down for not accomplishing anything, which in turn will wreck your self-confidence and stop you from embarking on a new project. And there are two unproductive habits that you need to watch out for. And one is workaholism. You see, some people, some people respond to creativity by overworking. And overworking is very, very counter, uh, counterproductive. And working too hard makes it impossible for you to explore this uh, this higher power that is flowing through you. It's better to let your brain naturally explore these ideas as opposed to forcing it. The second is competitiveness. You see, the thing with competitiveness, it, it gets you focusing on the wrong things and the wrong questions, right? Like, for example, ask yourself, like, why why did his film get made and mine did it? But instead, you, you, you gotta reframe that into, you know, positive questions like, did I work on my screenplay today? And you need, you need to make a conscious effort to bring your creative self out into the world. And you see, confidence, self-confidence is, is an artist's best friend. And if you don't have self-confidence, then you need to look back into your past experiences and deduce as to why that is. So visualization of your perfect day is a great exercise you can do to help rebuild your self-confidence. And you can do this by by imagining what your your perfect day would look like from the moment that you wake up to the moment that you go to bed and even imagining uh, visualizing yourself overcoming certain challenges and affirmations are also another great way of help building your your self-confidence so uh, my example I I got uh, a few affirmations from a course that I worked on maybe like five years ago and then added on a few but to this day 
there are about maybe uh, thir not 13 of them, but 13, 13 minutes of them that I listen to every morning to help reprogram my mind, you know, seep into my subconscious to help, you know, build that, build my uh, self-confidence. And you could start off by maybe setting out five and then increase from there. And lastly, make sure make sure you you take some time to to enjoy the the small joys that that life has to offer and with that thank you everyone for for uh sticking through if you made it to the end appreciate you and don't forget comment like subscribe share to anyone you think will you know benefit from this information and yeah you know we we we're, we're getting the hang of this youtube thing so you know appreciate you until until next time